As I'm sure you know, traveller, crocodiles and alligators can get quite large. The Mahamba is a good example of this. The Mahamba is a gigantic crocodilian creature that lives in the swampy areas of the Lake Likuala region in the Congo. Everything is bigger in the Congo, it would seem. The country is home to giant spiders like the Jabafofi, and is also host to a number of living dinosaurs and prehistoric creatures like the Congamato, the Kasai Rex, and of course, the infamous Mokele Mbembe. Along with these ancient giants who rule the untouched areas of Africa, we have the Mahamba, an enormous crocodile which some believe to be a surviving Sarcosuchus, which we are told went extinct around 93 million years ago. The Mahamba can reach lengths of up to 50 feet. While some say that the creature is a living Sarcosuchus, others speculate that it is, in fact, a previously unknown freshwater relative of the Mosasaurus, a huge sea-dwelling monster presumed to have gone extinct by the end of the Cretaceous period, presumed being the key word here. The Bobangi Aboriginals, who live in the area and have done for millennia, state with absolute conviction that the Mahamba is an animal unlike any other that they have seen. They have only compared it to the ordinary crocodile for the sake of comparison and for the benefit of outsiders and explorers who ask for a description. It would seem that the Mahamba is not just a large crocodile, as many skeptics claim, but something more. With so many surviving dinosaurs living in the Congo, it could even be that the Mahamba is a surviving Spinosaur. The Spinosaurus lived in what is now North Africa, not far from the present day Congo. Surviving Spinos may have made their way a little further southwest over the ensuing millions of years. The Mahamba was first reported by a Westerner in 1889 by a man named John Reinhardt Werner, an engineer working in what was then known as the Congo Free State. During the course of his work, he came across what he described as giant crocodiles many times and suggested that the creatures were rather common in the area. Werner worked on a steamboat, the AIA. He stated that the enormous crocodilians common to the area were around 50 feet in length. How did he know this? The steamboat he worked on was 42 feet in length. With this as his point of reference, he was able to deduce the length of the monster crocs as they swam alongside the boat. On one occasion in the late 1880s, Werner and his assistant, a local boy, had made their way from the boat to a large sandbank to go duck hunting. Having shot one, and seeing that the rest of the ducks had taken flight and landed again past a low ridge of sand, they knelt down and then crawled along behind the ridge in order to get close enough to take another shot. Upon reaching a suitable vantage point, Werner raised his head and looked over the ridge. The ducks were still there, but they were not the only thing waiting for him. Less than 50 yards away, about halfway between he and the ducks, was what he described as the biggest crocodile he had yet seen. He reported that it was around 50 feet long, and the centre of the saw-like ridge on the top of its back was about 4 feet above the sand on which its belly rested. Having only a shotgun with him, and needing something more powerful in order to take down a creature of such a size, he sent his assistant away to fetch his rifle. As the assistant would be some time getting to the steamboat and then back again, he decided to stay where he was and observe the immense crocodilian creature. It didn't seem to mind his presence, either because it was asleep or he was out of its line of sight. After a short while, some ducks landed close by and they were within shooting range. Remembering that there was no food on board the AIA steamboat, he decided to aim and fire at another duck, which he successfully bagged. Upon firing the gun, however, the giant crocodile was startled and, its great sweeping tail sending sand flying far and wide, quickly scrambled towards the water, where it submerged itself and disappeared into the depths. Werner encountered the Mahamba once again, in 1888. 
While traveling along a river, the AIA suddenly hit a sandbank in an area where the water seemed to only be about three feet deep. The engines were stopped, but the bow was embedded in the sand, which seemed to be heaving up and down beneath them and the water was strangely disturbed. At first, Werner thought they had run into a hippo, but then realized that three feet of water wouldn't be enough to cover one entirely. It was at this point that he saw a gigantic crocodile, longer than the AIA, frantically rush across the bank and tumble back into the deep water. He stated that they must have hit the creature while it was underwater and jammed it into the sandbank, at which point it freed itself and made its escape. Werner was fortunate. He had witnessed the Mahamba several times and lived to talk about it. It's likely that there were a few explorers who did not, however. With so many witnesses coming forward and reporting animals of gigantic proportions and titanic prehistoric beasts still living in the deepest, darkest corners of the Congo, is it really fair to dismiss the Mahamba as make-believe? Freshwater crocodiles, saltwater crocodiles, alligators, caiman and gharils, they come in all different sizes. With the Nile crocodile reaching 20 feet in length, this shows that this type of creature can grow extremely large. So why couldn't it grow larger still? 